Okay, let's see how we go with this one. I've wanted to do a type intro for a wee while. So I'm just gonna run through a few different features and see where we end up. I've started off with this quote, uh, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can from Arthur Ashe. So I'm just gonna go through and animate all of these. Okay, so if you didn't know already, this text in here is actually rich text. So you can just come in here and you can change it as you want so you can change the sky uh, the scale of it the, the weight of it or whatever you pretty much want there's so much in cavalry around text that i'm just going to really just motor through this so yeah i mean if, if i did like a full-on breakdown it would take quite a while so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this sub mesh to break this small um text block down here into different levels and basically what the sub mesh does it's probably easy to explain if i just throw some noise on it you can see that it's breaking everything down and we can move everything around on uh, different levels so i can change this to words to lines so if you've got a lot more text it makes a lot more sense to it on lines um, but yeah that's essentially what it does but we're not going to be playing with any of that and right click and reset attribute to default so let's just quickly animate this text popping up i'm just going to set a keyframe on frame 10 and then i'll go negative 150 and you can see everything's just popping up at once but what we want to do is we want to offset them so that the first line comes up then the second line then the third then the fourth so we can use the time offset and we're going to use the stagger and I'm just going to go negative eight and um, if we do it now we can see that it's actually starting at the bottom then going up so we want to flip that curve as well um, I'm just going to change the level mode back to words and I'm also going to come and jump into my curve editor and pop that up a little bit add a keyframe there and i'm just going to shift drag that one out and then it's just a slightly a slightly smoother ease into it so if we look into our sub mesh we've got these options for position scale rotation the opacity as well uh, in this instance i'm going to replace this and i'm going to use uh, a color blend so with this color blend it also allows us to animate this so which is which is fed through which is really nice so i'm just going to come on here change my gradient down to nothing and then when it's say about 50 percent it's going to be pink and then when it's 100 percent it's going to be this little kind of off-white color so this is how it's going to change this is how it's going to blend in so we'll just set a keyframe on zero come up to 10 and see how we go yeah kind of happy with that it's quite cool that you can just feed um different values through the colors and it works as you'd expect cool so the sub mesh like it's got a lot of possibilities and a lot of kind of cool things you can do so for instance uh, you know you can just add like a blur through here and we can even just put like a a value into it and you no know. so yeah there's there's heaps of different cool things that you can do with this sub mesh okay so we have our text selected and we just hit forge and if we hit play now it just kind of pops down into a relatively tidy little pile 
So let's just have a look at what's going on here. As you can see, we've got this, these boxes around all our letters. So that is the first thing we can change. So we'll change collision type to polygon. And now let's go back into it. It's given us these convex hull shapes around our letters. And if we do, if we hit play, it's already kind of improved the animation a little bit. What else I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come into the world scale and just change this down to 0.5. And I just feel like that just gives it a bit more energy straight away. And we've also got the starting velocity. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a random on that. And it's a bit more of an, not like an explosion, but it is a bit more of a, yeah, there we go. It's just a bit more energy from the get go. Um, we've got this gravity option here as well. Oh, and start frame. So let's change the start frame to 15 and I'll just turn off the gravity there. So um, gravity, obviously it can go in any direction here, but um, negative 10 is the default. And I'm also just going to add a attractor field. Let's see what happens here. Cool. And with this attractor field, uh, I can see that it's kind of spinning out there a little bit. Um, I might just keyframe that so it's 100 there and then down to zero relatively quickly. So then it just kind of pops in, spins around, hits a few things, and then it just kind of breaks apart. Um, maybe I could have timed that so that it kind of like hit the edge and then kind of uh, popped off the side, but what are you going to do? So for this one here, I'm just going to click on my color array and I'm going to add it to the text. And you can see here the first color in my color array is the same as the background. So what I want to do here is I'm going to change this background color depending on the color array. So for that, we use this utility called contrasting color. I'm just going to pop that down there. And as you can see straight away, as soon as I do that, it's changed the background to color. But what we want to do here, so the way this works is you have an input color, then you've got your, your dark color, and then your light color. So just grab your color array, feed that into the top one. And I'm going to change these two as well. Even though it's minor, it's slightly different black, slightly different white. And then in our color array, if we cycle through these, you can see that it's going to change that background color for us and I'm going to change it to the most contrasting. Just so this iterates by itself I'm just going to use the color code script and I'm just going to change some of these settings. So when I did this I had a different way of working. So now it's just going to cycle through those. Cool but um, I thought I'd change the quote and so every time the color changes, this this last part here changes too. There's definitely a few ways that you can do this. So you can do with um, formatting inputs or formatted strings. But in this instance, the, the easiest way of doing it is going to be with a string manipulator. And the string manipulator by default is just going to shuffle your text around. And this manipulator has got like a number of different effects in it, such as changing the case string um, and tr transitioning a string from one thing to another and bah, 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 resizing the string but what we're going to be using is replace string and we're going to find the word can and we're going to replace it with something else so I've created this array and I'm just going to feed this into here. And then for the sequence on this, 
I'm just going to feed that into there so that every time it changes, the color changes and the text changes too. Hopefully you uh, picked up a few tricks along the way. Cool. Thanks for watching.